All right, so oh. here we are, investment metal casting. Hello. We're going ben, to pour some metal? Yeah. Awesome. This is our investment casting shop. Yeah. Uh, here we take uh, organic and 3D printed and wax form models and we destroy them and turn them into metal things. Uh, so what we start out with is something sort of like this. Okay. And right through the center of it, we got uh, a little wax, wax tree. Yep, a wax tree. And then off of these base trees, we can what's called sprue up all of our different pieces. Yep. So on this one in particular, there's a bunch of little acorns. Yes. Uh, Organic things burn out great, so we do lots of organic casting in here. Oh, just to be clear, this goes into something like this, right? Yes. And gets filled with plaster? Yeah, it's called uh, investment plaster. It's similar to plaster of Paris, very fine grain sort of stuff. And then you peel off this rubber part and that becomes the pouring gate for the metal and yep. it burns out whatever organic matter was in there and the wax. Yeah. Okay. So we uh, leave it in our kiln over here. Yeah. And. Uh, it's nice and hot, wow. gets up to about 1350 degrees there. And uh, that both burns out all the material and yeah. it also fires the uh, plaster. Uh, once the plaster's been fired, it also gets kind of porous, which lets us use this great vacuum caster we got set up right in front of us here. So that when we go to pour the metal, it uh, pulls a vacuum right through the mold and, and you get a great- And brings the metal fill. into every little- yep. and so. Am I right that you can 3D print the forms that you're casting? Yes, exactly. So uh, this is actually a 3D printed fidget spinner. Oh. Uh, download them off of Thingverse. Everyone's into them these days. Yeah. And uh, we can take that, attach it to the sprue with a bit of wax or actually PLA. How do you and, make this go away? Uh, throw it in an oven at about 1400 degrees and most it melts out. Melts really? Right out. Yep. And so now you're left with a void that's perfect and you fill that with metal. Exactly. Holy cow, that's amazing. And that's what we're about to do. Exactly. Okay. Oh my gosh. That is, at what, kind of, what kind of tolerance do you get out of the 3D prints? So the 3D prints will usually be accurate to probably plus or minus 0.1 to 0.5 millimeters. Uh, you get a bit of scaling when the metal shrinks. Right. But print your part once and take a measurement and you can scale all your other prints by exactly the same amount. Oh, and wow. you get some pretty intricate and detailed things. That's incredibly detailed and intricate. Yeah, so that one is actually taking advantage of the SLA style printers and those will get you into the micron range of detail and accuracy. Wow. You can do a lot of really fine features. It's uh, gotten really popular in the jewelry industry. That's amazing. I had no idea such an incredible advancement was happening, but that would, I would have a hard time imagining that that <laughs> was made in such a simple fashion. Yeah. All right, we're almost ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, I'm gonna uh, put these first on. thing we're gonna do here is, uh, yep, get on our big gloves. So, we're pouring brass. Gonna just flip the switch for the vacuum there. It's on. Okay, so now we're sucking a vacuum through the hole there. Okay. And we're just gonna grab this guy here. And that'll go right down on the top there. Okay. And if you look at the gauge there, we pull in a good vacuum. Yeah, we are. Great. Negative okay. 20, yeah, it's working. Perfect, so. We'll lift this up. And graphite turns into an air bearing when you heat it up. So now you can lift that right out. And just pour right on the top until the button fills at the top. Oh man, I've always wanted to pour metal. And that's good there. Oh really? Yeah. That's it? Yep, that's it. Wow. Do I put it back? Yeah. Get it? That was less than I thought. Can I take yep. the glasses off and take a look? Yep. Oh man. So now we got our nice puddle of molten metal there. And yep. yep. So what happens now? 
So now we're gonna wait a minute till the metal on the top solidifies there, just so we know everything's filled all the way through. Okay. So right now the top there is still kind of gooey. Yeah. Wow, that is so awesome. And we can actually kill the vacuum here. So that'll take a minute to cool down. We can pour one more if you want. Sure, let's do it. Uh, I'm ready. Let me just see if we got enough metal in there. Yeah, it should be enough. So. Actually, we need to switch to the bigger gasket here. This flask's a little bigger. I see. So when I go to uh, lower this one in, I can actually have you give me a hand lowering it down the last bit into the... Uh... Copy that. This is doing the same procedure we did on this one? Yes, but Kay. we're doing it in reverse for the flask. And you want the vacuum on? Yes, let's do it. Okay, so this is our nice big one. Now that gets lower right down there. And got it? Yep. Okay, and you can just lower it down. Vacuum will take care of the rest. I don't have a vacuum just yet. Oop. Turn the knob. Oh, yep. Good call. There it is. Perfect. Okay, let's pour some more metal. Yes, there we go. And we'll pour some more. All right. And just pour whatever's left in there. Get a nice big button there. Perfect. And you can actually set that right down in the uh, little hot zone there. There? Yep. All right. Great. Awesome. That was fun. Yeah, so with these big ones you saw, it was a uh, perforated flask there. So when you get to bigger objects, you can get a good vacuum seal all the way around it. I see. So we I can do you. anything up to, I think our biz biggest flask is about six inches by seven inches. Uh, wow. Got some uh, zinc oxide hanging out on the top there. So you could probably cut the vacuum there. Sometimes you can get the uh, metal to pour into weird and interesting shapes. Not so much today. Wow. Yeah. And uh, doing everything in graphite, you get um, nice clean metal pours. So once the graphite gets over about 900 degrees, it starts outgassing oxygen. And the electro melt's just great because it's a tea kettle for molten metal. Right, right, right. I didn't know such a wonderful thing existed. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Although I was uh, going to change a heating element and I'm not a huge fan of the way the jewelry industry designs its devices. How come? There's a lot of nuts in very hard places oh. to reach. <laughs> but let's see. This is a little early to quench, but it might make for some good theatrics. <laughs> oh, it might uh, bubble up a lot? Yeah. Oh, it will bubble up. Will it hurt the casting? Uh, usually it just hurts the finish. Um, turn the hot things off. Yeah, the scary part about teaching classes in here has always been that uh, when stuff is over a thousand degrees, it burns nice and red and makes it really easy to see when stuff's hot and dangerous. Yes. So that crucible's already turned black and it's still probably about right, right. a thousand degrees easy. So safety's always a big concern around here. I imagine. Surprisingly, no serious incidents. <laughs> touch, wood, touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this one should be fine. You can see the metal's nice and yep. solid up top. So you want to grab a pair of tongs? Oh, sure. And put it in the water? Yeah, so we'll do this uh, bucket right here. It's a little more full. All right. And you want to go 
down and then get it under. Get the whole thing under or it's gonna start spitting it everywhere. Okay. And it will shake pretty violently okay. on you. Ready? Yep. Oh, nifty. Quickest way to break out plaster. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it drops off a cliff, doesn't it? Line it out of there. No way! Holy cow. Wow. That was PLA? Yep. And now it's brass. Correct. Incredible. This is like, this is opening up whole new worlds of possibility. Oh yeah. And uh, got a sprue cutter on the rack right behind you, the little green bolt cutters there. Uh-huh. You just pop them right off the uh, button there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you'll just remelt the rest of this. Yep. And there, there's. Look at that. They go right together. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Dude. <laughs> That's very cool. Oh, right. Here we go. So it started. Ah. So it started as this, and there it is, cast in metal, minutes later. So with the addition of a bearing, the printed PLA pieces have become brass pieces that is now a fidget spinner cast in metal. That is totally amazing. <laughs> and it's my new fidget. Awesome. <laughs>